Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani and the topic which I am going to discuss today is mandibular rotation. This topic is especially important for final year dental students as other topics from the section of growth and development are pretty simple and straightforward but this topic of mandibular rotation is very conceptual and confusing at least it was for me. Before jumping into the topic I would like you to know that among so many uses of lateral cephalometric radiograph one of them is to study the growth and other is to compare pre and post treatment results of your orthodontic treatment. How do you do that? For this I will give you the example of a boy who came with the complaint of overjet and some functional appliance therapy or fixed braces were given and after this treatment if you want to compare the changes you can easily see here that his mandible has grown forward and his upper incisors have been retracted. Molar relationship is also different now. But if you want to know exactly the areas where growth has occurred and what other dentofacial changes have occurred in this patient then you have to superimpose both the tracing pre and post treatment tracings over a stable landmark. Most stable landmark or area is cella and the shadow of cranial base. Because the growth of cranial base and cella depends on the growth of brain. And you know that growth of brain gets completed by the age of 5 to 7 years. And after that there is no significant changes in the shape and the size of this region. When you superimpose on that area now you can see that his upper jaw has grown downward. plane contour. This is considered to be a very stable landmark and you can appreciate that molar has been distalized and upper incisor has been retroclined here. For mandible, the stable landmarks are lingual cortical plate, this inner shadow of the lingual cortical plate and shadow of mandibular canal and mandibular third molar crypt if it is present it is also considered to be very stable landmark. So in this way you can use natural landmarks for superimposition to evaluate the growth of craniofacial region. Now what is the use of implants to study growth? For example if you have placed inert material implant in the bone at a stable site in a growing child and after few years you expose him again to radiography and you can notice that there has been some growth in the maxilla but now you can use implants for the superimposition and you can see easily that there was no growth on the nasal side of the palate while there was bone deposition on the oral side of the palate and there is some resorption of the bone at the point A area and anterior nasal spine has developed and there was some bone deposition here. His upper incisor was also retroclined and molar was distalized and extruded as well. Now coming back to the to today's topic of mandibular rotation, you should know first that the mandible has five functional processes. Condylar process, this gray area, the growth of this area depends on the condylar cartilaginous growth. Muscular processes where temporalis and masseter muscles and pterygoid muscles are attached and these areas are dependent on the muscle force. You must have noticed that in those patients who clench their teeth, these areas are pretty well developed. This yellow portion is the core of the mandible. The bony area around mandibular canal is core of the mandible. And this red area is alveolar bone. And the growth of this bone depends on the eruption of the teeth. You must have noticed that when you extract all the teeth, there is no alveolar bone left. York and Scaler in 1960s placed implant in the bone to evaluate the growth pattern in children. And that was a longitudinal kind of a study as they placed implant in the sample at the age of 4 years 
and they did serial radiography till the age of 20 years. For mandible, they placed implant in the core of the mandible as they thought that this is the stable area because it is far from the functional processes of the mandible. They also drew the implant line connecting the implants and they measured the orientation of implant line with the cranial base. To simplify it, I have drawn implant line parallel to the mandibular plane. And I have taken Frankfurt horizontal plane as the cranial base reference. You know that 25 degree is the normal angulation of mandibular plane with Frankfurt horizontal plane. And since the implant line is also parallel with the mandibular plane, the angle between this implant line and the cranial base line is also 25 degrees. Now when serial radiographs were taken, traced and superimposed, it was observed by Jor that along with displacement of mandible in downward and forward direction, there is also rotation of the core of the mandible in anti-clockwise direction. See it again? Mandible is moving downward and forward and along with that it is also rotated upward and forward in counterclockwise direction. We call it internal rotation. That is rotation of the core relative to the cranial base. Normally it is minus 15 degrees. Here negative sign denotes that the direction of the rotation is anti-clockwise. If the sign is positive plus then it denotes that the direction of the rotation is clockwise. This rotation had two components. The whole jaw is moving in anti-clockwise direction around the condyle like a pendulum. When you open your mouth and close your mouth, what happens? The jaw rotates around condyle just like a pendulum because mandible is swinging bone. So the mandible swings around the condyle. This is also found in internal rotation in anti-clockwise direction and we call it matrix rotation. Other component was intramatrix rotation which is the rotation of the core of the jaw itself. See again, this blue core of the jaw is rotating within the body irrespective of the condyle. This is intramatrix rotation. In people which normal vertical growth pattern is there or normal divergent, the intramatrix rotation actually dominates and contributes around 75% of the internal rotation while matrix rotation contributes just 25% normally. Now the question is that what could be the effect of this negative 15 anti-clockwise rotation on mandibular plane. Don't you think that mandibular plane should also reduce by 15 degrees? And FMA angle which was 25 now should end up 10 to 12 degrees probably in every adult. But this does not happen. Why and how? Just because of the external compensatory mechanism or remodeling. To keep mandibular plane to the same value, there is resorption at the lower part of the angle of the jaw and there is bone deposition at the anterior part of the lower border of the jaw, like this. And this external compensation is also known as external rotation, which is the rotation of mandibular plane relative to the core. External rotation is always opposite and equal. Most of the time it is equal to the internal rotation. Therefore, it is usually clockwise and denoted with positive sign. In this manner, minus 15 degrees anti-clockwise internal rotation is compensated by minus 14 to 15 degrees external rotation. And the net change is zero or sometimes one or two degrees that is possible. So if you want to know the total rotation in your patient, then you will have to measure the cranial base with the mandibular plane because it is the final result of the internal and external rotation. If you want to see that how much internal rotation was there in your patient, then you will have to measure cranial base with the implant line. And if you want to know how much external compensation was there in your patient, then you will have to measure implant line with the mandibular plane. In this way, you will get to know that how much external compensation was there in your patient. So this is the summary. Rotation of mandible are of two types, internal rotation and external rotation. Internal rotation has two components, matrix and intramatrix. Now what are the variations and what is the clinical significance of mandible rotations? Here you can see two different face types. On the left side, the lady has short face, prominent chin, 
flat mandibular plane while the boy has long face convex profile depressed chin and steep mandibular plane you can see gummy smile too these differences are actually due to different rotational patterns when due to any reason like mouth breathing or thumb sucking sometimes without any pathology maxilla grows downward excessively or sometimes maxilla is tipped downward posteriorly in both the cases mandible rotates in clockwise direction downward and backward see it again maxilla is growing downward and the result is that mandible is rotated around condyle in clockwise direction in positive direction therefore the patient has the tendency towards open bite he has convex profile gummy smile in short this case was actually class 1 skeletal case but has been converted to class 2 because of vertical maxillary excess we call them long face syndrome or long face patients in these kind of patients internal rotation is downward and backward and mostly matrix rotation because you have seen that mandible was rotating around condyle so in these type of cases external compensation is almost negligible however other patient had short face and she had intra matrix anti clockwise rotation dominating that has led to short face dental deep bite competent lips prominent chin these are the features you see in your class 2 div 2 type of patients and one more thing which i would like to emphasize here that rotational patterns also influence the incisor crowding so in these cases incisors are a bit moved lingually and the arch perimeter is reduced so there is more chances of crowding in these type of cases however chances of crowding is minimal in long face patient i hope i have cleared many of your concepts today thank you very much